Welcome, my beautiful souls. Uh, today we are going to do our Twin Flame reading. This is going to be um, both the Divine Masculine's energy, we'll do on one side, and then we're going to do Divine Feminine's energy on another side. Um, and then we're going to connect them right down the middle. I do it that way because, um, well, I want to see what, what's, what energy is connecting the two of them. Uh, but this is great for those who, let's say you watch a Divine Masculine reading and then you go watch a Feminine reading. Well, you can watch it all together here. Um, and I feel like it's important to know where each is at, you know, during this journey, this twin flame journey. As many of you know, I myself am in a twin flame journey. Um, it did take years, you know, not gonna lie, it did take years. Um, but was it worth it? It is worth it, um, you know. But I have to say, I feel like, you know, I feel like it comes together or the two of you come together in really in divine timing because, you know, Twin Flames, I feel like you've already planted those seeds of intention before you even came into this lifetime. Like, okay, let's get together around this time. And I also feel like now this is just my beliefs, but this is my beliefs for my spirit guides who I read through. Um, what was I going to say? Um, oh, I feel like each twin flame or like the masculine and the feminine each come down here, not just to find each other, though. That's part of it. A lot of people may say, well, why can't we just find each other? Well, you know, again, you plant those seeds before you came into this lifetime, but we are born with amnesia. And, um, you know, I feel like it's part of the soul's adventure to see, you know, for, oh, my light just flicked off. It's so weird how every time I started reading, my light flicks. That was a quick little flick. To me, it's like my guides are just saying, we're here, we're ready, Sandy, whenever you're ready. So, um, but anyways... In a twin flame reading, I also want to let you know that, you know, sometimes it's your story, sometimes it's not. And if it doesn't feel like your story, and that's what you want to trust, your intuition, then um, I have a playlist there. They just flicked again. I have a playlist of my twin flame reading. So, you know, definitely take advantage of that. It's like, you know, a whole library that's filled with different videos that can help you along this journey and any journey, really. Um, I try to cover all topics, but anyway, so again, um, you know, you and your twin may come together at different times. I do feel like if you came into each other, like if you came into this lifetime together, let's say 99% of twin flames, then we'll connect. Now, is it an easy journey? Well, for some, but for most of us, no. You know, you have you're the runner, you have the chaser. Um, I was, I'm definitely the runner, and I've always been that way. Like, you know, I don't know how many relationships I just like boom left. Um, but even when Sam and I reconnected, um, it took me five years to really just go with it and. Um, I'm not kidding. Like it took me five years, but we had five years of talking on the phone and I felt like we were just really getting to know each other again. We knew each other as kids, but not as adults, not as full grown adults. So the reinter the reintroduction to each other. Um, and even though it did take, well, first of all, it was 40 years in between, but then five years on the phone. And I would not trade that because that was romantic it let us get to know each other you know as adults what we found is a lot of similarities within our stories you know what i mean like same like our kids are around the same age um just a lot of synchronicity so the reason why i'm saying that is because you know i don't want to see anyone disappointed like ah when is my twin coming I feel like, again, it's it really is in divine timing. It re That's how I feel. All right. So anyways, I'm going to stop talking and get into 
the reading. Um, so we're going to use a few different decks. We, of course, are going to use the Romance Angels. And I'm not sure when I'm going to use them, but I am going to use them. So we'll put them right there. We are going to use the Gilded Tarot to clarify and to connect them. That's the first thing. Well, first we'll do each of theirs energy and then we'll connect them. Um, and we'll clarify also or go deeper, really. That's what I like to say. For the Divine Feminine, I am going to use the Light Sears. And I'm going to put that right up there for right now. And for the Divine Masculine, I'm going to use the Universal Tarot. Um, let me go ahead and bring the lid down. Just get my, get this situated a little bit more. Okay, I think that looks good. All right, let's just take a moment. Let's just calm ourselves, calm our energy. Um, definitely feel free to invite your spirit guides into your reading. Ask them for signs of confirmation. You know, is this reading for me? Give me some clear signs if it is. They will. Uh, whether it be just like through goosebumps or angel bumps um, or actual like numbers, words, you know, whatever it may be. I feel like, you know, your guides will come through, especially because, again, I do read through my spirit guides who I feel then connect to your spirit guides. I feel like we're all one big soul family anyway. So anyway, calm the mind. And let's begin. So we're going to be, we're going to begin with the divine masculine. Um, by the way, I just did a pick a card reading. It's really pick a reading reading because each one of them is probably a half an hour on their own. <laughs> um, but they're just what they needed to be. And the reason why I'm saying that is I did feel, I think I even put in the title that I did feel there were some twin flames in there. All right, skim my cut. Okay, that did not want to come. Oh, two, oh, three. All right, we're going to take them just as they are. Well, hello, four of wands. So interesting. We open up with the marriage card. We have the seven of pentacles. And I'm going to explain that to you in one second. And then, hmm, the Six of Wands. This is victory and success. Interesting. First of all, let's look at the Seven of Pentacles. Because just like I was saying where I felt that certain seeds, well, your seeds, the seeds of intention to uh, come together in this lifetime. Well, that's what I feel in the Seven of Pentacles. It's about, first of all, Seven of Pentacles talks about patience. Having patience and that is part of the journey, unfortunately. Um, but, you know, patience is a virtue. But this is also, you know, this is just saying that if you move too quickly, it, well, it'd be bitter. I often relate this to like an apple tree. And, you know, this is like your tree of life. And these are your seeds, you know, or the masculine seeds. But really, I feel like a combination um, and when one is ready to come to fruition, then it's time to pick that apple. Um, to me, it's a great omen because it definitely is it like meant to be type of energy. Now it's coming right next to the marriage card. So that's interesting. But then into the six of wands. Hmm. All right, well, let's, let's keep going. Let's see what's going on with this marriage. If this is a current marriage, or we have the two pentacles, or an old relationship. I'm going to slide them over a little bit, give ourselves some room. Two pentacles is a question. You know, they called the juggler's card. I call it using the logical mind, maybe because I'm an earth sign. You know what I mean? Like making a decision, but using my logical mind to make that decision. And what I mean by that is not a fear-based mind. You know, will it expand my world 
or will deplete my world. Someone may be in a in a relationship right now, and um, I don't know. Maybe it's run its course. We have the Three of Cups. That's about celebrating. It's the energy of joy. Interesting is coming under the Seven of Pentacles, and next to the Two of Pentacles. So where there was a question, I feel like now it's an answer. It, to me, feels like a yes. So let's see what they're celebrating. We have the death card. Card of Scorpio. But this is about closing doors. So where we see the marriage card or the commitment card as the very first um, energy that came out, I feel like... It's, it feels like, you know, to be honest, it feels like a relationship that is ending. Um, maybe it's taken them some time. You know, maybe they had to feel right about it. There could be children involved in a situation. Could be why I move slower than, you know, I, I get this feeling like if I could just follow what my heart wanted to follow at this point then it would be you. But I feel like there's things that I need to clean up. Um, by the way, just so you know, um, because someone did leave a comment and said it, they get confused when I say I a lot in a reading. When I say I, I'm literally you or who, whatever, whoever I'm reading for. So that's why I say I. I am right now the masculine's energy. So I... I'm thinking about closing a door. But this is about closing a door for good. This is about opening a new chapter. And remember in the death card, um, you know, first of all, it's an energy you don't want to fear because it really does talk about a rebirth. And when one door closes, another door always opens. But I feel like this is on purpose. Someone's closing a door. Because it's mirroring that two of pentacles. So I feel like it's someone has thought about it. You know, again, there could have been like a lot of responsibilities. Um, so it may not just be that easy, right, to shut the door. But in the same breath, I feel definitely like they're ready. I almost feel like this person's vibration let's say has really grown and maybe whoever they're connected to has not because i do feel a difference of vibration you know maybe when they got together both were in the same vibrational energy but i feel again you know maybe the the divine masculine actually is doing something well it definitely feels like he's doing something to raise his vibration um and it's working. I mean, that's the thing. It's working. All right. Well, let's keep going. I want to try to make it not too, too long. That every time I say that, they're extra long. <laughs> it's also interesting how the person in the Seven of Pentacles... And the person in the Six of Wands are all looking away from the marriage card. Now, I, it's called the marriage card. I just call it the commitment card. It just means two people who made a commitment to each other. Um, but, you know, we all know that doesn't promise us that something's going to last. Uh, and again, I feel like I may have done this in, you know, when my vibration was lower it could have been when I was younger type of energy. When I say lower vibration, it doesn't mean like someone's bad. It just means that, you know, maybe they haven't had this spiritual awakening yet. Although I do feel like that is what the divine masculine is having, a spiritual awakening. But it feels like the other person, not so much. Not so much. Well, that makes sense because... You know, the way my guides teach me is when we raise our own vibration, when we know what we deserve in the world, and we're, we are also giving and caring individuals 
um, but nobody's full at the same time, then I feel like things naturally vibrate to us. And those who have a lower vibration naturally want to fade away or naturally the universe divine wants it to fade away. Problem is our human is sometimes pulls it back in. Well, I don't feel like that's the case anymore. All right, we have the sun, Cardaleo. This is the illuminator. You know, definitely feels like it's helping this person make a decision. Well, hello, Knight of Pentacles, my one of my favorite cards. Um, I often feel this is our guardian angel. And this night, well, it's first message. It's interesting because it's mirroring the same message, what talks about patience. This night talks about coming in. First of all, this night is bringing in a pentacle. And this pentacle really is meant to enhance one's life. It's interesting, though, because I feel like this is them giving you the pentacle or coming potentially into your life. You may have waited. And listen, I never feel like it's a good idea to do nothing and just wait. You know what I mean? Like, live your life. Have experiences. Um, that's what you're here for. Even love, you know, like loving others. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, and then just, I feel like if, you know, like, let's say you do fall in love with someone else. Well, then you may say no to this. You know what I mean? Let's say you fall in love with the soulmate. Well, then maybe I say no to this. Um, but what I'm saying is I don't think it's a good idea just to like sit around and wait. And you have every right to say like, you know, I'm not going to wait. Some of you may already know this person and that may be why I'm saying all this. All right. We have the devil. Card of Capricorn. And then we have the hermit. It's interesting because the hermit's actually illuminating the devil's energy. I'm going to slide these up. Um, and if it's not a Capricorn for you, then first of all, you have Capricorn and Virgo side by side. Um, and I mean, and then the Knight of Pentacles. Wow. I have a feeling this person must be very grounded at this point. At this point. So it's interesting, you have two illuminators. You have the sun, well, the masculine, excuse me, the masculine does um, the sun, which really will illuminate everything. But I feel like the sun is here to help them illuminate a choice, whether to close the door. Is it a good idea? Um, and the devil can be certainly illusionary energy. You can relate it to lower vibrational energy. And again, I don't mean that as an insult. I just mean it as in, you know, it really talks about temptations. But the hermits is the hermit is looking right at it. And, you know, it's interesting because in this image, you can actually see the lovers. But they're being influenced. By a negative energy. But those are the lovers. And then the hermit. Looking right at it. You know. I have a feeling. For many of you. This is energy that's taken some time. Because we have a lot of kind of slow moving energy. A lot of energy that talks about patience. Um. Energy that talks about someone needing to make a decision, but I feel like they definitely want to make the right decision at the same time. I get this feeling like where they may wonder, like, is it the right thing to do? Again, maybe they have children and that does make it harder to decide to leave. But it seems like they're back is against that relationship you know like in their mind it feels like it's over and i do feel like that's what the two pentacles is about should i or shouldn't i is it okay you know i kind of i kind of like this person because i feel 
that even if there's no love left here, they still feel like they don't want to hurt anyone. So how do I do this without hurting someone, but also be able to live my dreams? You know, I guess I just have to realize that this is my life, right? Like I was given this life and I do have a right to do what feels right to me. So uh, the hermit, you know, can feel like the dark night of the soul. This is someone who is seeking spiritual wisdom, you know, seeking the spiritual light. And it's interesting because the hermit is mirrored by the sun, which is the light. So it's telling me the hermit finds this light. Also, I, I kind of love how the hermit's illuminating the devil. But again, it's the influence over these lovers. But now I'm looking at it with a spiritual lens. So much more clarity. Now, I don't know if someone would actually say like, oh, you're my twin flame or just that I know, you know, I know that there is like mm, this love mm, that I can't find. I couldn't find. Doesn't mean I haven't loved people. It's just that I just haven't felt, you know, the type of love that I'm really looking for. I feel like this is definitely someone who um, prefers to be in love. Interesting. But I also love the Knight of Pentacles there. Um, because the Knight of Pentacles, again, I come at the right time and he's heading right towards the Divine Feminine. But also looking at the Devil, it's almost like breaking that illusion and once I break that illusion, then everything starts to move because it, the death card's right above that. So closing of a chapter, it must be the four of wands chapter because everything else feels like it's forward moving. You know, like it feels like in the seven of, seven of uh, pentacles, one, like this seed is coming to fruition. You know, it can be that their spiritual team is helping to guide them. And now they're actually listening where before maybe they didn't really understand that. You know, it's like, what's my intuition trying to tell me? Okay. Um, let's look at the bottom of the deck. Oh, wow. Justice. Look at that. So. You know, that could be a marriage and justice would be a divorce. Justice is cutting ties. Um, but it's because someone's not feeling whole. Someone's feeling unbalanced within a relationship. And what they're seeking is balance. You know, justice is really about making one whole again. So I feel like the divine masculine is not feeling whole. And it may... You know, they may need to use the sword of justice to really find that balance again. I feel like it's important that they find balance first, you know, and because divine is part of this reading, you know, guiding them to the right steps and the right time. But this feels like it's it, like this must happen first. Or Potentially, because it's on the bottom of the deck, it's already happened. And um, I don't know, but there's a few times in Twin Flame, in the Twin Flame readings, where I did feel that energy. Um, and sometimes I feel like, you know, when I, like, I divorce this person in the marriage card, or I cut the commitment that I had to this person, you know, they may need a little time to just reflect get back to whole again. And, but yet at the same time, the Knight of Pentacles is just sitting here waiting. Patiently, I should add, you know, the Knight of Pentacles is like, I, I can wait all day long. I can wait for years. Well, however long it takes you, I will wait. But again, this, this night, 
is talking about bringing in the Ace of Pentacles. And the Ace of Pentacles means that something's coming into one's physical life. Well, because again, it's moving towards what's going to be the Divine Feminist energy and the light right behind that. I love that. You know, this person has had illumination that where they've been and who they've been with, it's just no longer serving them um, for whatever the reason. And again, I feel this energy of like one feels like the masculine has raised their vibration, you know, probably has changed some things um, that they know has kept them down, you know, held them back. Six of wands mirroring that four of wands but also looking at the feminine this is the energy i feel like where really like i have nothing negative to say you know what i mean because i feel like this person has become someone who you know other people look up to um and it can be for many different reasons but in the six of wands i often feel that other people are looking up to this person for action steps that they've taken, doors that they've closed. And maybe they're maybe that's what they're telling others, like, I'm telling you, close these old doors and just listen to me. A new door will open. I do feel like um I, I do feel like there's some time here you know, time in between, you know, who knows how long they've been with that person could have been for a while. Again, they could have like even have kids with that person because I do feel like there's just something that, that has made them take some time to really evaluate whether I should leave. And it doesn't feel like love is on the table. You know what I mean? Like I'm not feeling any love and normally I could feel it. So I'm not feeling that. I, it, it feels more, you know, maybe in my responsibilities. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and bring in the Divine Feminine. And then we'll bring in the Gilded Tarot. And somewhere, we will use the Romance Angels. I mean, what are, you know, how could I not use them in a Twin Flame reading? <laughs> All right, let's see where feminine's energy is at right now. And I am looking at current energy. You know, I hope, even though I feel like there is time in between, you know what I mean? Like uh, this, this person, again, how to make some real decisions, how to close some real doors. Um, but I feel like they've reflected upon it or... Let's say that they're still reflecting upon it. Again, this night, it, we know it's going to come in, but it's going to come at the right time. And that means the right time for them, but also the right time for you. Okay. Well, hello, magician. Is someone trying to manifest their twin flame? Potentially. We have the Two of Wands. It's like I'm just looking out the window, waiting for my twin. Um, interesting. Two twos back to back. One is really optimistic energy, like adventurous. I'm ready to take this adventure. But then we have the Two of Swords. And this is this can kind of put a halt to my plans. This is wearing a blindfold. Uh, could be just something I don't want to face. But it does serve me to face it, especially with it mirroring the magician. And the person in the two of swords is looking right at the person. Well, the two of wands and the two of swords are looking at each other. And the magician opening up this reading. Maybe I'm trying to make a decision here.
22. Some of you may have a master number 22. Knocking the feminine all or the masculine all over the board. Okay. We have judgment. Hello, judgment. So, judgment is your spiritual team. They are calling you to the present moment. This is a good thing. Um, they're telling you that there's a few different things in this energy. First of all, that your signs are given in the present moment. This is about allowing oneself to have a rebirth. I feel like the feminine is going back and forth on that. But I do feel like the one thing I do want to do in this energy is allow myself to be in the present. So that may simply say, you know, not reflecting back. You know, reflect back to learn, but then let it be. How they're closing a door, then you're being called to the present moment. And I kind of love that the magician is right above it. And it's like this person is living or leaving their physical body, but connected to that silver string. Which simply means that you, you know, you can ask to travel, um, but you're always connected. So you won't, you won't lose yourself, so to speak. We have the Five of Pentacles. Mm. Five of Pentacles. Five of Pentacles makes it hard for me to believe. It makes it hard for me to believe that there can actually be a rebirth. I feel like the Five of Pentacles must have to do with also the Two of Swords. Where I am wearing a blindfold to just simply maybe something I don't want to face. Some of you may have just been, you know, waiting and waiting. And that's why I say I don't really feel like it's a good idea. Of course, each to their own um, to just sit there and wait. Like, because I feel like if let's say twin flames come together later in life, like it happened for me, um, there was a lot of things that I've accomplished in my life. Then maybe I would have I wouldn't have done otherwise. You know, I don't know that I would have started my tarot business had we connected right away. I don't know. I feel like because I felt guided to do tarot. I felt my spirituality just got um ignited um and it was after a loss. But it's it's really the things that I've witnessed that really um increased my spirituality tenfold now in the five of pentacles so it does kind of feel like you know a towerish type moment it usually means something happened outside of your control this person is kind of just sitting in that energy you know like uh it is a five so it's asking for change but it's actually giving you the way here's a key that unlocks this next door what lies behind this door this person's looking down doesn't even realize that the key to unlock the door is right there so they're still kind of focusing on the past and maybe that's what your spiritual team is saying like we don't want you focusing on the past on the things that have gone wrong um things that didn't work out in your way maybe they just weren't meant to you know what i mean um, some of you yourself could have been in a relationship and something could have happened and it could have been something you didn't expect. And of course it could hurt. You know, it's funny because like, I even think about relationships I was, I was in where I wasn't in love anymore and it still doesn't make it easy to end it. You know what I mean? But ending it is exactly what I feel like your spiritual team is asking for allowing this rebirth and also the strength of the magician like your ability to manifest and it may just simply be telling the universe i'm ready but you want to make sure you are ready right because if i'm kind of stuck in this vibe of pentacles energy will i even notice the signs that my guides are sending me 
and it's right next to your spiritual team. Okay, let's keep going. Some of you may, how do I say this, but I feel like you, you visit each other like in your dreams, but they're real. You know, like again, that silver string where, you know, maybe during your dreams, like you're astro traveling and you're connecting. Maybe you don't know who it is yet. But, you know, I, and I feel um, intuitively, I feel like I may have some dreams where like I can see the person, but I can't see their face. You know, I'm just going to tell you a short story because it just brought it brought it to my mind and I feel like when you know something comes to my mind I'm meant to tell it um before Sam and I got together I had a dream actually I had a few dreams but one of the dreams that really stands out to me is I had a dream that my daughter and I went to this party and we walk in this house and it felt just I don't know it felt different there were people all over the place so the person who owned the home was having a party um so I remember going into the living room sitting down talking to some people and then looking at my daughter and thinking for some reason like these aren't my people and then um she's like well let's go out into the kitchen so I go into the kitchen and I'm sitting at the kitchen table which is just a little it was like a two-seater and I'm sitting there and I see someone who is standing at the sink and they're washing dishes, but their back is to me. And I just knew, I knew it was Sam. And I got up and I went to the sink and I put my arms around him from behind and put my head like against his, like the side of my head against his back. And he ended up, he didn't turn around. But he put his head like so our heads were touching, like almost giving me that validation back. And this is before we reconnected. So that's what I'm talking about in dreams. Like so and I didn't see his face. I just knew. I just knew it was him. And, you know, we are now in union. And he is, he's the cook of the family. Um, and when he's out in the kitchen, I now all the time go behind him and give him a hug from behind. And it always reminds me of that dream. That was just one of the dreams I had. Temperance. Divine timing, my child. All in divine timing. So, where the masculine had two energies of patience, this is what temperance asks for, patience. But it is so divine timing, or let me say divine timing is, is in play in your love life. This is a very good omen. You know what I mean? It, it's saying the divine realizes that these soulmates, or these twins, or soulmates, I guess, since I said that, um, you know, that they are going to reconnect and in divine timing. Now, it's mirroring judgment, which is calling you to the present moment. So I feel like the time for patience is coming to an end. Also, card of Sagittarius, by the way. I feel like I have a few Sagittarius's here, like, Say my name, say my name. All right, let's keep going. I feel like I got to lift up my head. I got to take that key. I got to unlock that door. And then jump into the Two of Wands energy which means I'm open, right? Like I'm open to whatever adventure is next. I don't even know that I'm putting any stipulations upon it, though I do feel like at the same time, you're, you want to manifest and you are manifesting. 
Maybe, you know, maybe you've been trying to manifest for so long that you're just like giving up hope. But again, maybe it just wasn't the right time. But now feels like divine timing with both of you having really quite divine energy in each as reading. Present moment, divine timing. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Hello, Ten of Cups. Hello, House of Love, House of Harmony. This could be someone I'm starting a family with, or it can be blended families. And again, that can be a little bit of what the masculine, I feel, the hesitation with it. I don't know if it's hesitation, but more like I really thought this out. You know, I didn't just leave on a whim. I really thought it out. I really felt, you know, what everyone was going to experience. And if I have children, I thought about them also. But I feel like ultimately this person just was not happy. They were not happy. You know, and it doesn't mean in all areas of their life, because I feel like financially they've been doing well. And they could even be some type of a leader um, and be very good at it. It could even be a spiritual leader. Now, again, doesn't mean that I put that title to it. But what am I talking about? Let's talk about the Ten of Cups again. So, and that's why I'm saying some of this, for some of you, it can be like blended families. Um, your kids could be small or they could be adults. But it's still the blending, right? And I feel like what this is saying is it kind of feels seamless, like like seamlessly our, our you know, us and our family will just come together. You know, it's a lot of joy, a lot of fun, laughter, a lot of love. And it's mirroring the magician. And interesting because the waters of the magician are flowing down into judgment and judgment is picking up on it. So again, the feminine is being called into the into present day energy so that you can receive these signs. Now, I'm either going to pick up my head from the five of pentacles. Use that key, unlock that door. Why not? Why not at least give it a shot? And I feel like what you find behind that door is your masculine. You may not know that. You probably don't know that. And, you know, I feel like love usually happens in the most unexpected ways. And sometimes in... um. You know, like I can be in a chaotic time in my life and then bam, you know, someone reaches out to me or I meet someone and everything changes. You know what I mean? Um, and again, I hate to keep talking about myself, but the the day that Sam called me, which completely out of the blue, again, 40 years later, um, it was I was not having a good day. I was feeling very lonely and, you know, I'm a Virgo and it takes a lot for me to feel lonely. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't mind being alone, but for some reason that day, um, I picked up the phone and I called the person I had just left that I was with for 25 years. Now we're still good friends. Um, but it was over, but I was, I was having that lonely day and, when I was talking to my ex, um, I get a beep from my call waiting. And on the other end was Sam. And again, 40 years. So, but I wasn't actively thinking or trying to manifest Sam into my life. You know what I mean? It's just, he just lived in my heart, but I wasn't, and I lived, we lived in different states. So I didn't even think it was really even possible. I don't know why, but I didn't, but yet it was.
What a beautiful line. The magician, right? You manifesting, the power of you manifesting. And listen, it's it with the two twos there, you know, one is where I'm going to allow myself to have an adventurous soul, see what happens, you know. Again, I, I'm, maybe I'm not even putting any expectations out there. I'm just going to, I'm like, I'm ready to go with the flow. Or the two of swords where there is a little hesitation. There is a blindfold. Something I don't want to face. It has to, to me, it must tie back to that five of pentacles. Five about a change, right? And temperance right next to it. It's like, I, like divine timing can't happen until I use the lock to un to I use the key to unlock this next door. This is again where your spiritual team sends your signs in the present moment. So I do feel like there is a need to let go of the past. Um, and you know whether it's relating to this person or just life in general or another person, something came to an end. But I feel like it's to it's because it's time for something new. You know, I feel like if this person in the Five of Pentacles knew that this key unlocked a door to the Ten of Cups, I feel like they they jump up and unlock that door. But they're not believing that at this moment. Eight of Wands, fast-moving energy. You know, the feminine's definitely being called into the present-day energy. Um, it feels really important. Now, I'm not saying this is coming together immediately, but there could be the beginning of it. I also want to remind you, though, that this is what I think about, I bring about. Now, mirroring the Two of Wands, beautiful beautiful now because it's under the five of pentacles you know i can manifest both good things and not such good things so that's why i do want to think about what i'm thinking about and i don't want to freak you out when i say that like every thought i need to be conscious of what i'm thinking about but if i really do want my life to look a different way, then I do want to think about what I'm thinking about. You know, that's the law of attraction. Um, it also makes me feel like once these two come together in some form, again, it doesn't necessarily mean, even though the, the Knight of Pentacles does mean, you know, something's coming into your physical world doesn't mean you have to like jump right in and be like okay let's go but the eight of wands next to the ten of cups makes me feel like as you know the love will flow very quickly it's like temperance is saying if you trust in divine timing then you do need to take off that blindfold Hello, Will. Hello, Destiny. And right under Temperance. So, when Temperance says divine timing is at work in your love life, she's not kidding. You know, it definitely means to me that these two did want to come together in this lifetime. And I say that because I don't think all twin flames want to come together. You know what I mean? And sometimes a twin flame doesn't have to be romantic. You know, it could be a friend. It could be a parent. Um, but this is romance. No doubt. This is your destiny, my child, as temperance would say. But then the seven of swords comes out. So it's interesting how you each got one extra card. Seven of swords tells me 
why that five of pentacles and the two of swords is there. So clearly in a past relationship, you weren't treated well. Clearly in a past relationship, someone, um, you know, this can mean many things. It could just mean someone who lied a lot. So therefore I couldn't believe anything they say. This is someone who takes more than they need, more than their fair share. Um, it can talk about someone who's cheated. But I do feel like this is something that you took on and it wasn't easy. Of course it wasn't easy. And that may be one of the things that you fear. Like, I don't want a repeat of this energy. I don't feel in any way this is a repeat of that energy. Um, but I do feel like there's a need, you know, just like judgment is saying, we've got to learn to put the past in the past, right? Jump into that two of wands and just be open. That's really all you need to do is just be open to whatever divine has next, you know, part of your destiny. Destiny is mirroring the Ten of Cups, House of Love, Eight of Wands right in between it. So you guys will hear me often say, like, I feel in love. There's no need to rush it. But I feel like I feel like it is going to move quickly. Um, because it's going to feel different. You know what I mean? It's just going to feel different. I feel like this person over here would easily express the way that they feel to you. Yet, I do feel like there are things that they still need to wrap up. And once they wrap that up, then I feel like it's movement time. But I, I definitely feel they want to wrap these things up. They want to get on with their life. You know, they want to be happy again. The sun to me is happy energy. And by the way, their sun is mirroring the Ten of Cups for the feminine. Well, hello. Okay, let's see if it's on the bottom of the deck for the feminine. Hello, Ace of Cups. So that's what you're trying to manifest. The Ace of Cups. Love. But this is really unconditional love. Something's making me look underneath that. The Queen of Swords. Interesting because I feel like this Queen of Swords, first of all, her sword is down. And she's just looking out the world. Like, I feel like she's reflecting on what do I want to do next? Where do I want to go? And again, the feminine may not even have a clue that this is about to come in her direction. I say her, but I want you to understand, like, um, like as a Virgo, many times I'm, in, I'm more in my masculine energy than I'm in my feminine energy. There's even a card with Mother Mary that, that tells you that, you know, certain times you're being asked to use your feminine energy. Um, and that's not to throw, throw confusion, you know, in the mix, because I know sometimes these can be confusing, um, but you're definitely trying to manifest love. And it does feel like of the highest form. This person over here is cutting ties. Um, let's see what's underneath that. The Six of Swords, that's good. So not only, you know, I'm saying that's good, but again, I feel like whatever there, you know, whatever there was in that Four of Wands no longer exist. So I don't feel like the love exists. Um, I don't even feel like the commitment exists. I'm not saying this person's not, like this person's stepping outside of a relationship, but they don't want to be in it anymore. And look at the Six of Wands underneath that. That tells me that something somewhere turned toxic. Someone's energy turned toxic. Or, again, where you are you were dealing with the Seven of Swords, a little bit of, un, well, not a little bit, but untrustworthy energy. In the Five of Swords, you know, when you see the Six of Swords, you got to go back one card. That's where the toxicity lies. But it's showing this person leaving that. Leaving it. So where there was a five, they've now moved into a six. I feel like the same thing needs to happen over here. 
but it will. Okay, we already looked at that. All right, let me just put these in order. All right, so first thing we're going to do is connect them. And I'm just going to move the hermit over here for the time being. All right, let's give them a cut. Get my cards back in order. Okay, let's connect them. Well, that didn't take long. All right, we have the Ten of Wands. Now, I feel like that's for both, honestly. I feel like both, because you and the, well, I'm saying you, but the, the Feminine and the Five of Pentacles, you know, it makes me feel like in the Ten of Wands, like uh, maybe you were someone who um, would give a relationship your all, you know, to the point where all the responsibility of keeping that relationship alive ended up on your shoulders well you know that's too much and that's what i feel in the ten of wands i feel like secretly or subconsciously i really just want a tower i want it to end but maybe i don't feel strong enough to end it so the universe does you know temperance does because again temperance is at work in your love life we have well hello judgment so you already have judgment I don't know why I keep saying you. Um, I don't know why. But look at this. So not only is judgment calling the feminine into present day moment energy. Judgment is calling both into present day moment. Judgment is saying, I'm going to help direct this. I'm going to help bring you, the two of you together. But it's going to be instinctively. It's going to be intuitive signs that I send you. Please follow them. We have the Nine of Wands. So we went from the Ten of Wands down to the Nine of Wands. And you know what I feel like that means? I mean, I, I feel like this means that we've gone from, let's say, a coupled relationship, and probably for each, into a single relationship. Nine of Wands is great energy. Um, it's not easy energy, but this is where probably each side has taken a good hard look at their life. You know, in the Nine of Wands energy, like all these wands have already been created. You know, so there's a lot that one's done with their life. And this is really asking you just to reflect back, really to see how strong you are now, like how strong you've become. The things that you have overcome. You know, I have a feeling over here with the Seven of Wands and the Ten of Wands. You could have certainly been told that, you know, you aren't worthy or what have you. But that's just their limited, very limited viewpoint. So, I feel like this is now to becoming single. And I do feel like that is a requirement. Like, now we're single. Now, I'm not going to say that some twin flames don't meet their counterpart when they're connected to someone else. But I don't feel like it's when they're in love. Like, if they're, if they're in love every year, then it doesn't feel like divine timing to me. And I already felt that. Like, I already felt. And there's nothing here that even talks about love. So I find that interesting. I have a feeling they connected with this person like way back when. And some of you may already know who they are. And that that's, that's difficult because if I've been waiting for this, I've probably been waiting a long time. But in the same breath, 
you know, I feel like still I went and lived my life. I still went and made accomplishments on my own. Look at this. The Knight of Cups. Well, hello, Knight of Cups. Unexpected Cup of Fulfillment. This is love. You know, what's interesting about the Knight of Cups is it is unexpected. I don't know exactly when it's coming in. Even more reason to pay attention to my intuition. And why? Because you're going to be guided. You, you'll feel the action steps to take. You know, I don't feel like you have to try to control anything here. Not with temperance here. Not with judgment here. Simply bring your energy to the current moment. And I feel like the rest will take care of itself. Unexpected. Looking right at the feminine. And the Ten of Cups is right there. Wow. Okay. I'm trying to think, do I want to bring out the romance angels yet? Not yet. Let's go ahead and um, now we see this beautiful connection. I feel like we're two, now become one. But judgment is like, well, now it really is the perfect time. Again, each reflecting back and understanding how they have grown. I felt that with the, the masculine that spiritually this person has grown a lot. Um, I also feel like, you know, like they have a good job. They may be a leader in some way. Um, you know, so I feel like they got their shit together. Let's just put it that way. And But this is also about the feminine realizing how she has grown. All right. Let's just go ahead and I don't know that I'm going to clarify every card, but let's go across the very top. Interesting. Look at this. So we have the five of pentacles coming over the four of wands on the uh, divine masculine side. The feminine already has that five of pentacles. Five of pentacles now right over that four of wands and then look what follows so it's not that the masculine doesn't want to make a commitment it's the masculine wants to make a commitment to the right person to who the masculine feels is like their person you know the energy that's meant to be right over that seven of pentacles i find that so interesting They could have just certainly said, you know, they may have, the person they were in a relationship with, they could have certainly put them in some type of turmoil. Um, but again, I get this feeling of, of like, I have to live life. Like, I have to be happy. Like, I haven't been happy for such a long time. And again, it's not, it doesn't feel like it's relating to their money. It just feels like love. But the love is gone. Justice. It feels like they're using that sword. And whether it be a divorce or just simply cutting ties. Well, now we know they do it with the five of pentacles. Maybe the person on the other end wasn't really expecting it. Though in a way, I don't know how they couldn't. Um, Maybe they themselves weren't strong enough to end what seems like was ready to end. But that, that's their energy. We have the hangman. Look at this, the magician over the magician. You're both manifesting each other. Hmm, two of swords. I don't really love that. 
Um, you know, I don't really love that because I feel like what this is saying, the hangman coming over that 10 of wands where, you know, that is hard energy. There's no other way to look at it. It can be a time of like really hard or heavy responsibilities. I feel like for the feminine, it feels more like where I did give someone my all, but yet it still didn't turn out. You know what I mean? Um, so there may be a little fear about like giving my heart again. And that's okay. Because I feel like, again, your spiritual team is so strong in this reading that they'll find a way to put you at ease. The hangman almost feels like a pause in action because maybe it is important that both of them be, again, in single status. You know, that would be the easiest way. Doesn't always mean that's the way it happens. Um, hmm. All right, well, let's keep going. Some of you, I feel like this two of swords over the two of wands where it really is adventurous energy. It may just freak you out. That may be what it is. It may simply be that like, holy shit, look, look at what's coming towards me now. You know, again, you may not even know that this is a twin flame. You may not even be looking for that. Or you are. You know what I mean? Because you are actively trying to manifest. And I feel like with the Ace of Cups, it's love. But it still may freak you out. It'd be great if the Two of Wands came over the Two of Swords now. I feel like for a few of you, that blindfold is like, will it really ever happen? But I also want you, I want to remind you that maybe there are, maybe there is certain requirements um, for this really to come together. We have the three pentacles. Hello, lovers. So. Here we have the lovers again. And just like I said, in the devil's energy, where um, it feels like the lovers are being influenced, like it's a darker type of energy over the lovers. Here, first of all, I want you to look at the feminine's energy. It's like she is in current, current energy. And here's the masculine behind her. And look at just her body language. Like, I can feel you. I can feel you. And I feel like the mask, it's interesting. I have a feeling some of you have had some dreams, like really vivid dreams, and they may be real. You just may not know that. You know, you may have just been like, oh my God, what a dream that was. Well, that could have been your counterpart. Then we have the Eight of Pentacles. So anytime you see an Eight, think of a new beginning. Um, you know, and the Eight of Pentacles in a love reading can answer a question, you know, can this, can we truly be successful? And it would state if, if both are willing to put in, put their focus upon it, then absolutely. It'll only grow and grow and grow. Um, I feel like... Now, I know this is not going to be for everyone, but I do feel like for a few, the divine masculine feels like almost like I got a job offer. And this job offer is outside of where I live. And maybe I decide to take this job. And that's what ultimately puts an end to um, this relationship. Because I feel like I'm not interested in taking this person along for the ride. Uh, by the way, lovers is a card of Gemini. The meaning of it is a head over heart decision. 
I do feel like that's part of what the masculine is going through. Do I follow my head or my heart? Um, because I feel like their heart feels empty for who they were with. So I feel like they ultimately do follow their heart. I don't feel like this is energy that moved quickly, but I feel like once you come together, then it moves quickly. It's funny how I said I wasn't going to look at every card, and here I go looking at every card. But I also like to bring you as much clarity as I can. So I do feel like for a few, um, this masculine may have like changed locations also. We have the nine of pentacles. So, okay. They could have their own business. You know, what I love about this is this really talks about, uh, well, it, it, the meaning of the card is, is successful self-employment. And that may be exactly what it is for this person. Because again, I feel like there's some leadership not just some, but I feel like there's, a, there's great leadership ability within this person. Um, but I feel like as a leader, that also takes time because I need the experience. This is someone reaping the benefit of their own hard work. It is following the nine uh, or the eight of pentacles. So there's progression immediately. I also feel like this talks about independence. So it feels like the masculine is now an independent energy. And what I mean by that is single. Coming right over the death card. Look at this. Hello, two of cups. You know, I should really name these this reading twin flames and soulmates because both are soul connected. Both energies have known each other, you know, before. Um, and I mean that e eternally. You know, your soul connected. You're, you know, even if, even if like these two souls don't connect in this lifetime, they will be together. But I kind of love this. First of all, just look at the image. First of all, these two cups clearly are being presented. And then the people behind it are looking eye to eye. To me, it represents vibration. Also, the eyes are the window to the soul. Now, I feel like I need to go back to the Three of Pentacles. Because in a love reading, the Three of Pentacles to me is, is a beautiful type energy. This is the energy where I feel like someone is appreciating you for exactly who you are. This is your uniqueness, you know, who you are on an individual level and being proud of that. This is where other people can even be looking up to you. You know, I often find that in twin flame or soulmate readings that each can do something pretty similar to the other. You know, it doesn't have to mean like, um, like Dick, Sam and I, for example, um, you know, by time we reconnected, I was on this spiritual, spiritual adventure. Um, and he worked in a hospital. So, you know, that's also to me, a spiritual type of energy where you're giving, you're helping. So. The appreciation of each other's soul, of who each one is, and not needing, you know, there's like no blindfolds are needed, no facades are needed. I can be who I am. Um, I feel like the other, I feel like each of us would be proud of each other. Okay. Okay. 
Interesting that the soulmates is coming right over judgment. Right? Calling you to the present moment. Telling you there's about to be a rebirth. And then what shows up? That two of cups. I feel like, I do feel like two people, whether we know each other or not, it's like a type of love we want to manifest. Like a higher vibrational love. If we do know each other, then we're trying to manifest each other. And again, I, each, each one may not know that. All right, well, let's keep going. Two ones. So it didn't show up exactly where I wanted it to show up. I wanted it to show up next to the two of swords, but instead it decided to show up under the two of swords. And it's coming over the five of pentacles. Five of pentacles was that energy where you're kind of lost in the past. You know, looking down, it can be a state of sadness or uncertainty. But again, there's that key that unlocks this door. And now we have the two of wands. I'll take it. So I feel like I've jumped out of fear-based energy into, you know what? I'm going to give it a shot. I feel like you unlocked that door. Two twos again. Actually, we have four twos. 22-22. We have the tower. Okay. That makes sense. And I'll tell you why I feel like the tower makes sense right there. Number one, the seven of swords is right below it. And that's untrustworthy energy. However, they are untrustworthy. They're just untrustworthy. Whether it be their words, um, whether it be their actions, you know, I feel like definitely hurts. I feel like their actions hurt you, hurt this, hurt the feminine um, and the tower coming over temperance, you know, that talks about number one, patience, and then trusting in divine timing. So if remember where I said in the Ten of Wands, I feel like subconsciously I'm wishing for a tower. Maybe I don't, maybe I feel like I don't have the strength to do something on my own. Therefore, I put it in divine hands and divine's like, well, the best thing I can do for you right now is give you this tower. And even though temporarily it can feel difficult, uh, it's for your own good because it's moving you to a destined time. You know, the Seven of Swords doesn't feel like a destined person um, unless they were there to help teach you certain things. You know, sometimes love teaches it like, you know, there's different vibrations to love and Sometimes like a lower vibrational energy can help teach us exactly what we don't want in love. But we also got to realize not everyone's going to be like that. And because, because you have such a divine energy on the table, I don't feel like there's any way in how your spiritual team would be leading you to more of the same. No, quite the opposite. I feel like this tower is really here to save you. Again, because I feel like too much, too much. And I also feel like the hangman is a requirement, like, you know, a pause in the action because this person needed to find that lock or find that key to unlock that next door. This person needed to close the door so a new door can open. Well, it is showing this person closing that door. They become single. So, although people don't like the tower in a reading, sometimes I do feel like the tower is kind of like a lifesaver. Whoop, I brought my chair down too far. Hang on one second. Okay. Let's go ahead and do the last line. So, again, even though I wasn't going to do every card, here I am doing every card.
Okay, I'm going to put the hermit back over here now. Now we have, look at this, the wheel. You have the wheel over here. Now we have the wheel over here. Right over the sun. Right over the sun. Right below the lovers. Then we have the seven of cups. Over the knight of pentacles. Hmm. Let's see what comes next to that. Seven of Cups is, to me, it's trying to make a decision. Um, though I kind of feel like they already made the decision. But it can be like the decision of like, which cup do I choose? It can talk about like a little bit of chaotic, chaotic energy. It is mirroring the second four of wands. And it may simply signify that this person is deciding like the direction they take. Hello, sun again. So answers will be given. Ten of swords. Queen of cups. Um, can be a Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces, but certainly doesn't have to be. To me, the Queen of Cups is someone who really does enjoy love. Being in love doesn't mean I have to be in love, but I feel better. You like I I appreciate having you know that special person. She is holding a cup out. Well, here is that cup, the cup that she wants to manifest. I want to manifest. And now she's actually holding that cup. This Ten of Swords is mirroring the Seven of Swords. I feel like this answers a question for some of you. So if you're over on this side and you've been dealing with, let's say you've been dealing with someone on and off who just carries lower vibrational energy who is just feels untrustworthy and maybe part of the question that the feminine has is you know do i continue with this or not i feel like in the ten of swords you've given someone plenty of chances and i feel like it's also answering the question if i decide for whatever reason because sometimes when great love comes your way well so do other people you know what i mean like people from the past to like I didn't know how to treat you right, but I'll be damned if I want someone you to be in love with someone else. So you have to know the difference. Um, but I feel like it would be very clear. It'd be very clear. But I also feel like this is saying, if I feel like, you know, should I give someone another shot, then I feel like what it's saying is it'll just end up in the same place again. You'll just end up with the daggers in your back. And I feel like that's part what the feminine is trying to figure out. You know, like I dealt with this lower hurt, you know, cheating, lying type of energy. Um, you know, it reminds me of that that day when I was I was having a bad day, and I was questioning. I almost. I almost invited my ex back into my life. And then lo and behold, the phone rang. So well, that changed everything. That gave me a clear answer. I hung up with the other person and then continued to talk to Sam again for five years on the phone. But I simply feel like this is answering a question of if I expect someone to change, chances are they're not going to change. So what's the best what's how can i best handle this i feel like really the only way to handle this is by just not accepting it you know not accepting it and maybe that's just simply something you were learning you know um having loving souls because I, I feel like both sides probably gave a relationship everything and it still didn't turn out and it doesn't mean it wasn't always bad, 
but it definitely feels like it was bad at the end. But yet, I say at the end, I have a feeling this energy feels like throughout the relationship, throughout the relationship. And maybe that's part of what the blindfold is. I just need to understand that, you know, if someone has lied to me or has a habit of lying or cheating, and then they say they're going to change, don't believe it, you know. And I'm not saying people can't evolve. People can evolve. But here... It's showing a repeat pattern of the same type of energy. All right. So let's just go right over that. And then we'll bring out the romance angels. We have the eight of wands. We got a few. Look at this. The five of wands. That's a lot of ego. It's a lot of fighting. It's literally coming right over the Seven of Swords now. Also touch, touching the tower. You know, when I feel, when I see the Five of Wands, the first thing I feel is the person, whoever I'm dealing with in the Five of Wands, if I'm expecting someone to back down, chances are they're not going to back down. If I'm expecting someone to acknowledge their ways, Chances are they're not going to acknowledge their ways. Um, so the, what's the best thing I can do? Uh, realize that I don't really need all that. I just think in, in the moment. You know, I just want someone to recognize. I want you to recognize what you did to me. But I feel like they're incapable of that. Or they may say, what did I do? What have I done wrong? Like, really? So, again, that tower... It feels kind of life-saving, to be honest. And then we have the Queen of Wands that's coming out with the chariot. Beautiful. So Queen of Wands certainly can be a fire sign. Um, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, but doesn't have to be. This is my queen um, that moves according to her desires. This is not a fear-based energy in the, with the queen. This is someone who, you know, listen, maybe, again, I've given, I've given it my all. Um, but I have no interest in continuing this lower vibrational energy, this lower vibrational relationship. So I love the chariot coming next to that because to me that means movement. And by the way, the chariot, first of all, it is a card of cancer. But I often describe the chariot um, as the balance of the feminine and the masculine, usually within ourselves. But I also feel like this is talking about because we're doing a twin flame slash soulmate reading, that it's also talking about this love. Like both becoming balanced. And it doesn't mean perfect, right? It doesn't mean like I got all my shit together. But it does mean that I'm moving to, uh, I'm willing to move forward. Even if I don't have a clue what I'm moving forward towards. Remember, this queen follows her, definitely follows her intuition. So maybe that's what this queen is doing, simply listening to her divine guidance and then jumping in the chariot. The chariot really represents unlimited potential. The only time there's a limit on this chariot, it's our human mind that puts it upon it. But other than that, it really does represent unlimited potential. Now, I also want to remind you that we have free will. That's why I say potential, because you know, free will will decide that. It's like that two of swords. That's free will. But I feel like at this point, the blindfolds have been ripped off. You're being honest with yourself. You're probably saying no more to someone. No more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the road, Jack. And don't you come back no more. what you say? <laughs> so. We'll put them right in the middle. So, no more to this. Of course, your decision. But I, I do feel like temperance is giving you that tower. So I feel like I say your decision, but in a way. 
It's like divine is trying to save you. You know, maybe from yourself in a way. I feel like there I feel like actually it's just the recognition of knowing that you deserve better, right? Knowing that you are lovable and you deserve the highest form of love. But also knowing that I need to I need to be able to match what it is I want to bring in. You know what I mean? Like I can't be in lower vibration and put out those intentions. Oh, I want a high vibrational love, but then I won't be able to meet that energy. Remember, the universe must meet you right where you're at. And that's why I feel like the hangman, um, the tower, the five of pentacles over here where they left a relationship. You know, I feel like that's important, an important component to all this. Although the sun keeps coming out, you know, that is about a brand new day. It is playfulness. Um, for some of you, this this masculine, where I felt like they may have taken a job offer that took them away from where they were living. It could have been back to like where you live, like back to a hometown. So I wouldn't be surprised. Um, now, again, I don't feel like that's for everyone. And I don't even feel like, in a way, I feel like we don't need to worry too much. The best thing we can do here is just clean up our own life. Take off blindfolds. Understand that we deserve the highest form of love. You know, think about where your own vibration is at. And then manifest from that vibration. And you will bring it about. You know. Everything seems to want to bring these two together. All right, let's go ahead and bring in the romance angels. And I'm just going to go right across the middle of the board. Let's give them a cut. And again, we're just going to go right across the middle. Flirt. Extend your lighthearted energy to others. Playful. That's probably why we're seeing the sun twice. Right? So this feels like it's meant to be playful energy. Maybe a little flirting going on. Look at this. Calling in your soulmate. Calling in your soulmate. Your prayers, affirmations, and visual visualizations help bring you together. That's why we have two hang... Um, I'm sorry, two magicians. It's like you're calling each other in. And by the way... It's coming right under, over the soulmates. Now, I know this is a twin flame reading, but I'm not going to leave out soulmates also. Yet, whether that's a soulmate, twin flame, doesn't matter. It's talking about the type of love. So, your prayers, your affirmations, they're working. Passion. Allow your heart and soul to sing with joy. Joy seems to be the name of the game. And by the way, they have the three of cups. That is the energy of joy. It's the energy of optimism. It's also the energy of celebration. Okay, let's see if anything else wants to come out. I guess they did. We have honeymoon. Enjoy the bliss of holiday time together. Mm. You know, it's interesting because I feel like that's talking more about a time period than anything. And you know what else is interesting? This person may not live right where you live, but somehow, some way, I feel like, and then you do. 
even if this is long distance, you'll still come together. New love. New love. A new person has stirred your romantic feelings. It's coming right under calling in your soulmate. So again, the ability to manifest. Love yourself first. That's what is happening here. You know, it's like taking the power away from those who just didn't know how to love us right. Those who just insist on staying in their egos. Those who I am no longer interested in. You know what I mean? Um, even if I have weak moments, my heart knows it's not truly what I want. So, you know, I feel like this is such an important component to true love. Because it's, it, it reminds me again of like the law of attraction, right? If I don't love myself, how's someone else going to love me? It's not that they can't love you, but am I not going to throw a bunch of blocks in the way? Maybe. Your self-respect make, self makes you more romantically attractive. So passion, flirt. Calling in your soulmate and then enjoying the bliss of this holiday time together. Oh, my light just went off. Oh, then it just came back on. Okay. So, new love. A new person has stirred your romantic feelings. Go ahead and flirt. Go ahead and have fun with it. Right? Let the passion shine. Um, I feel like love yourself first must have happened first. You know, and it doesn't mean like that I'm 100% because I don't feel like that's a necessity. Um, but I'm on my way. And by the way, this just feels like, again, especially with the three pentacles up there, where both will recognize, or let me put it a different way, each will love each other for exactly who they are. To me, it means this must be very open, flowing conversation, um, probably long discussions. And again, with that honeymoon where it feels like we may be in different locations, I feel like that would only be for a time being. You know, maybe that's why I was telling you my story. I always feel like when I tell my story, it's because someone else is relating to it. Because honestly, I don't like talking about myself. Um, okay, I feel like I just want to take one more. I don't know why. Something's telling me take one more. So we're going to do it. We're going to do it. Finances and career. Financial issues are a factor in your love life right now. Well, I kind of feel like that was the masculine's energy. Because again... The reason why maybe I stayed longer than I really wanted to because I I feel like th there's no love le left. And, and I feel the same over here. Like if I feel like in the with that seven of swords, it goes into that ten of swords, a repeat pattern. If I feel like, you know, oh, I think I'm still in love with them. Chances are you're not. Chances are you just want to have someone in your life, but this is, you don't want them anymore. Trust me. Just please trust me on that. All right. Last but not least, I want to do Mother Mary, and we're going to do two. We're going to do one for the masculine and one for the feminine. Give them a cut. Hmm, it kind of felt like that card right there.
Well, present moment. I am fully present in the here and now. I mean, this is being guided. Oh, feminine got a lot. We're going to take it. Grace. I am filled with the same beauty, poise, and divine perfection as all of God's other creatures. I feel like that's what the feminine really had to learn. Right? That she is worth it. Right? That she, like, it, you know, I feel like, I feel like someone has knocked her down. Knocked her self-respect down. Maybe even a belief in herself. But I feel like she's finding it again. Feels like just as it was meant to be. Quiet. I go into peaceful silence and I listen. Wow. Right below that is judgment. Your spiritual team sending you messages through your intuition home i trust my divine i trust and follow my divine guidance about my home well i have to tell you i feel like that's more for the masculine um heading towards the home of where the feminine lives and i don't mean like the actual home of course i won't leave that off the table um but in that direction and then look at this miracle I trust in God to know the perfect solution to this situation. You know, I'm not going to read it because there's too many cards to read from the book, but I already know what it says. Expect a miracle. It, it says at the end, I expect good things to happen. And therefore they do. I expect good things to happen. And therefore they do. Or I can expect bad things to happen. And damn it. Therefore, they do. It is about one's vibration. It is about manifesting and then believing in that fact. Again, I don't even have to put a name to it. It's just the type of love I'm looking for. But man, it's going to feel like a miracle. And for some of you, it's been a wow. It's been a while. Not that you haven't been busy with your life and they're busy with their life. But it's just it just feels like with judgment so much in the reading, calling both to the present moment over and over again. And then the movement that we have to each other through not only the Knight of Pentacles. I come into your physical world. I make your physical world better. In the right time. The timing must be right. And I feel like it's saying maybe both need to be at least on their way to being single. And um, also being open. You know, maybe it starts in the two where I take a step. But again, I feel like very quickly this energy moves because it just feels different than anything else than anyone else you have loved and i feel like very quickly you'll recognize that now can that be scary like holy shit you know holy shit is it just me or is this for real well it feels like it's for real it feels like it's for real you know the one thing i do want to say is even though we keep getting present moment, I do feel like there's certain components that are important. You know what I mean? Like, like where sometimes, you know, like temperance says trust and divine timing. And then there's a lot of energy of patience, right? But it feels like patience. So everything can be wrapped up, let's say on each side. And then that feels like divine timing to me. So don't forget that Knight of Cups is also there. Unexpected Cup of Fulfillment. Don't forget the Feminine has the Ace of Cups. And the very first card is the Magician. So I absolutely feel like I want to manifest love. Um, and then the Masculine. 
the Four of Wands, you know, great. We open with the Four of Wands, but that's not always a good thing. But it, to me, it's recognizing a relationship they were in, a committed relationship. Um, but now they're cutting those ties, whether it be a divorce, if they were married, or just moving on. I'm moving on up to my feminine. Expect a miracle. Both of you have the will. But listen, this is all meant to happen in divine timing. Okay, I think I'm going to leave it there. Um, I know this is, you know, there's a lot of information on the board. And sometimes you do have to watch your reading twice uh, to really pick it up on a spirit in a spiritual way. You know, this is the way I feel. I feel like the first time we watch a reading, we're using our human ears. Um, but then when, let's say, movement starts happening, and this you remember this reading, and then you watch it again, but now you're watching it with your spiritual ears, you're going to just pick up those spiritual messages like never before. You know, I love doing Twin Flame readings, so I don't want to give anyone false hope. And I do feel like there are some requirements to get for us to come together. But it feels like it's important. Each one of them is important. You know, each one of them are dealing with something difficult. And each one of them overcoming that. And then really finding themselves again. And then, and then it just feels like the right time. It just feels like the right, that's what the Knight of Pentacles says. I come at the right time. Well, we already see that it's coming. So this must be pretty damn close to the right time. And then the romance angels holiday time together. Well, holidays are right around the corner. So judgment saying present moment, that may mean again around the holidays. You may be buying an extra gift this year. And you may be receiving an extra gift. So I'm going to let that be. Um, I thank you guys. I know these are not the easiest readings to understand. But I feel like all the information is here. It's just, you know, how do you perceive it the first time? Um, yeah. I'm, okay, I'm going to stop talking. I, I don't want to overread. Um, I love you guys. I thank you. I know some of you are going to say, Sandy, I thought you were taking some time off. It's interesting. I, I did take two days off. Um, but then I kept thinking about this reading, like, oh, like something was calling me to do this reading. And I knew that was going to happen if I decided to take time off, that readings were going to come to me. And it, it's almost like if I don't get them out of me, I just keep thinking about them over and over. So time off. Really, what I'm, I guess what I'm going to do is just go a little slower as it is in releasing videos. But I did want to get this over to you. Um, I don't even want to put a date on it. You know, I was going to say it's for November, but let's just say... Um, you know, it's literally telling us around the holidays. So I feel like that's a major, major clue. Are you ready? Are you ready? All right. I'm going to let that be. I love you guys. I thank you so much for your trust in me. Um, and again, I have a whole library of Twin Flame reading. So if this one doesn't resonate, all you need to do is pull down the playlist and look at the title. See if one grabs your attention. That may be your story. Um, or there may be bits and pieces. But I have to tell you, for the majority of you, I feel like I'm telling your whole story. Um, but you trust your intuition. Okay? Trust your intuition. And I feel like your guides will definitely put it within you. Um, if this is your story, like you're going to feel something, you're going to know something, you know, but it's also giving you some action steps to take to bring it about. Um, you know what I mean?
to bring it about. So anyways, I love you guys. I thank you. You know, I really am nothing without you guys. Um, very seldom do I do home, like where I invite someone in and do a reading across the table one-on-one. -on -one. I used to do it a lot. Um, but now I'm just so busy doing, I do personal readings. Uh, but they're, you know, they're online. Um, was I, oh, and then I moved into Sam's house. So I just felt like, eh. I wish I had a separate door to my office, then I would do that again. But anyways, um, I don't know why I'm saying all that. I don't know why I'm saying all that. So I'm just going to stop talking. I love you. I'll see you next time at our table. Bye-bye.